Hey, this is Tyler with Tapper. So a while back, I had a flickering headlight. Switched out the bulb, turned out to be the ballast. Also turns out that when you need to replace the ballast on these cars, you have to take the bumper off by getting these four bolts on top, taking the under tray off, taking the wheel off, and then coming in here. And there's an extra two bolts on the bottom that you have to loosen to get the entire bumper off. So anyway, that's quite a bit of work. And while you're doing that, you might as well tear into a really expensive set of headlights with a cutoff wheel. Since this is on a black car, I had wanted to take the headlights apart, get everything blacked out, especially get rid of all the chrome inside of there for a while. So this was the perfect excuse to do it. First thing I tried was baking the headlights. That might sound kind of funny, but on my old Audi and a lot of different headlights, the adhesive they use is heat activated. So if you get it hot, you can just pull that headlight right apart at the middle. This one's not like that. Uh, it's a, it actually cures, so you have to come in. And I cut around right in front of the lip where it slides in there. So basically I'm taking the top half of the clamshell off. Then you can go in, uh, get all that top part off with a screwdriver, but still have a place to reference it onto when you're coming back in and putting it back together. With that top piece of plastic gone and the top uh, sealant gone, then I could come in there and I got this uh, like a hook bill knife and it worked really well for getting inside there, under there, and being able to break the bond between the uh, polycarbonate lens and the actual plastic body of the headlight. Took a little bit while to get th through it, but you just kind of have to keep at it and be slow with it. You want to make sure that you don't pull up on this at all, because if you do, there's a good chance you might crack that headlight lens, which I did in a small area. Luckily, it wasn't noticeable, but that would really ruin your day. You also have to make sure to push those two angel eye things down from the back. Otherwise, you will break them when you're taking them out. And if you aren't replacing them with new ones like I am, um, that's a really hard part to get. So after that, it's time to do a little bit more disassembling. There are a couple of plates that are held, held on by small Torx bits. So take those out and set those aside for later. After those are out of the way, you can continue the disassembly. There's going to be a little clip on the outer edge that you pop off, and then it'll slide out of there. After that's separated from the front, you can take the angel eyes out. Those just kind of slide into place. They're retained by that clip that you took off before. Uh, I wanted to black out the side markers, so I am taking these off of that frame. Again, it's just more clips that you have to be very careful to bend up but not break. When this is unclipped, there's another little metal piece in there that is, I threw it away since I'm blacking everything out, but you might want to keep it. Switching over to the other side of the headlight that actually contains the lights, taking out the low beam first or the daytime running lamps, there are going to be three different clips. You're going to pry up on the bottom so they slide forward. When you get that out, there's just a plastic lens that's just for looks in there, and this has another three clips that, again, you pry out from the back and pop out. It's worth noting on these that if you are going to leave any part of these chrome, you want to be very careful touching them even just rubbing it like I'm doing here, you can start to see through it. It's a very thin electro plating that's on here. Um, so it's very fragile. I just want to be careful if you're going wanting to reuse any of that. Two more pieces, a few more clips, and then I'm ready to start doing some prep work for the paint. To get these surfaces ready for paint, I rubbed all of them over with a Scotch-Brite pad. I believe it was a red Scotch-Brite pad and you can see how all that plating came off and it left a nice finish for the primer to stick to. So now I'm finally onto the painting. I got these pieces, they're all kind of small and hard to handle, so I used hot glue and I just stuck them to stuff I had around the garage. They had a base to sit on, that way the air pressure wouldn't blow them over. I didn't have to worry about touching them with my fingers. This is just a uh, regular automotive primer, a high build primer. I'm going to come back over it and sand them down to smooth it up so the surface finish isn't horribly critical on it. There's no reason you couldn't do this with a spray can. I just have the air compressor and I have all the guns and everything, so I figured I would use them. If you have an air compressor, this little gun, uh, I use it for detail stuff, and it was about 15 bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, so the barrier to entry is pretty low, and the cost of materials is quite a bit lower after you average it out over a couple of uses. After the primer had a chance to dry, and it usually dries relatively fast compared to paint, 
I went back and I knocked all of the high parts down with some 320 grit, just gave it a real light sanding over everything. Probably didn't need it. And then I came back with a black automotive base coat. It was some paint that I had left over from quite a while back. Uh, the base coat went on pretty well, and again, surface finish doesn't matter that much because I'm going to come back and knock down everything with some more 320 grit before I go on to the clear coat. This is where I started running into issues. I don't know if I didn't clean things well enough. I know there was some garbage in this other gun that I was using. It wasn't quite clean enough, but um, the just clear coat went down fine over all of the projectors and everything. When I was trying to de do these parts, I wanted to tint the lens a little bit, so I mixed a little bit of the base in with the clear. I wouldn't recommend that, even though the internet told me it would work. It laid down a little bit cloudy. Um, and there was some kind of weird reactions in the paint. I tried it a couple of different times and I just, I couldn't for the life of me get it right. There's fish eyes and all kinds of stuff in it. So I needed my car back together and I needed some way that I could get that done quick. So I sanded it down flat and decided I was just gonna go with some vinyl wrap. So this was stuff that I had left over from vinyl wrapping my trim. If you wanna check out that video, I'll put a link in the description for it. Stuff's really forgiving, really easy to use, and that was exactly what I needed after getting so frustrated with trying to do that paint so many times. You can tell the pieces that I have are not quite wide enough to do it in one step, but that doesn't really matter. When you do seams on these, they're really unnoticeable unless you're, you know, about six inches away from it. You aren't going to notice that this is seamed. So I got everything down, got all the bubbles off, and then I came back and I trimmed it along the edge where the light needed to shine through and trimmed everything back around the edge. And I did that all while the battery died on my camera. Last thing I had to do before I started reassembly was I needed to put the upgraded angel eyes onto the shrouds. Now I didn't really have any idea how I was going to put these on here when I started out the project. Uh, so the first thing I figured I would do is I would get them positioned where I wanted with some hot glue. Uh, these are the low beams, then I went over to the high beams next. As far as the angel eyes that I'm replacing the stock ones with, these are eBay specials. They're not the cheapest ones on eBay, but they are off of eBay. I went and I uh, kind of eyeballed how big I thought they should be with some calipers from outside the headlights so I could order them ahead of time. They're SMD LEDs and some companies make retrofit kits for these cars and they're somewhere between two and four times as much as this. I think this was about 50 bucks for the whole set of them. So if I had to guess, I would think they're probably from the same factory and these have been going strong for a couple of years since they've been installed. Anyway, back to attaching the headlights. These are were hot glued in place and then I mixed up some two part five minute DevCon epoxy. Uh, it looks a little bit messy from the videos, but you aren't going to be able to see any of this after the headlights are installed back into the car. I did this because the hot glue, I didn't know if it was going to stay solid with as hot as the headlights can get inside there. After everything was cured, I could finally start getting these things back together. I had been without the car for the entire weekend or driving it around with no headlights, so that wasn't a whole lot of fun. Everything just kind of snaps back together. I had to trim some of the vinyl a few times to get those side marker covers back on there. Uh, get, getting the lens back in these running lights. Now on this bottom piece of the projector housing, I had developed kind of a little bit of a hairline crack in these when I took them off. I wasn't particularly as careful as I should have been, so I used some E6000 on them. I did not want these coming loose inside the headlight after everything was sealed up, so I figured that was some good extra insurance for it. As I was putting them together, I realized that you might be able to see this red wire. It might stick out a little bit, so I just covered it with some electrical tape, and then I clicked those back into those three spots and ran the wires out the back of the headlight. With everything put back together this much, I could start in on the wiring of the angel eyes. One of the features I really thought was cool about this car was that when you hit the unlock button, the angel eyes would fade on and lock, they would fade off. So I didn't want to use the relay that came with the angel eye kit. Spliced into the original harness inside the headlight, put some spade connectors on there, and then I wired off of the two new angel eyes that I had installed in there. And these things are insanely bright. They're awesome. To go with the really bright new angel eyes, I got a set of 50 watt HID ballasts and bulbs off of Amazon. I believe the entire kit was a couple hundred bucks. 
I had already replaced one of the stock ballasts one time before this, and so I really wanted with a used one, so I really wanted some new parts in here just to make it reliable long term. So it is possible to get these ballasts in and out without taking the headlights and the bumper off of the car. It's just a really tight fit and you might not be able to get the far screw back tightened on there. One last minute thing I noticed was that there were holes where the original angel eyes had to come back up through these shrouds. I didn't think they were going to be very visible when the headlight was put back together, but I wanted to do something for them, so I got a piece of electrical tape and I put the sticky side towards a piece of that vinyl and then flipped it around just to cover it up so you couldn't see through there. It's not something you'd probably notice very much one way or the other after the headlights back together, but I thought it gave it a little bit more finished of a look than just having a hole sitting there. So to seal them back up, I just used regular black kitchen silicone caulking. Now I haven't had any issues with these headlights fogging up since I've used it, so I think it's sealed very well. As far as strength, they were on there extremely well before I did anything else to them, so I wouldn't have any reservations about doing it the same way again. And really, it felt pretty similar to the whatever sealant the factory used on the headlights. I used this relatively sparingly because I didn't want it squidging out all over the place, but obviously enough so that you aren't going to have any gaps in there. With the tape, I was just using this to hold them in place. I didn't want it too tight, so I just put a little bit of pressure on there. Again, I didn't want to squeeze it all the way out. I wanted some of it in there. Get the tape on there and then just let it dry for a while. Final little repair I ended up having to do on the headlight was these back covers. I think this was part of why I was having some issues with the ballast too, because these kept falling off. Um, part of it was because these clips had been taken on and off so many times that they had broken. So I used a nail, I heated it up to make a little pilot hole in there. It just cuts right through there and then you can thread it in pretty easily. Obviously it's not going to be as convenient as having the clips, but I think it's a lot better having them sealed up like this than having them come off and on and be open to the elements and have dust and everything get inside of them. On the factory they had some clips on these headlights in addition to the whatever sealant they use, so I decided to replicate that just with another couple of screws. I think I did four, two on the top, two on the bottom, and this was just in case that sealant failed for any reason. I really don't think these were necessary, um, but it was just kind of a peace of mind thing to get them put in there. So I got a lot done with this modification, and here's the stock one. Went from just the regular upgraded uh, angel eye bulbs to some actual SMD LED ones. You can see them from a lot farther away. They look a lot prettier. The 50 watt HIDs are quite a bit brighter than the stock ones. I went up a, to 6,000K, but they were easily as bright as the 5,000K 35 watt ones. Really happy with the extra vision that you got at night with them. And finally, I just think the car looks so much better after you get all that chrome out of the front and get that amber turn signal out of there. Uh, just really, especially with the black, really makes it fade in and look really stealth. As always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my video. Uh, if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see more. Hit that like button if you like it. If you have any comments or questions, you know where to leave them. And I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down in the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.